the thing about Jimmy Savile, um, and I started uh, writing in the books like The Biggest Secret, mm. you know, which came out in 1998. Um, I, I wrote about all of this stuff. It was very clear from what's come out is the police knew about him. Um, special branch that's supposed to protect the royal family absolutely would have known about him. British intelligence knew about him. Even the locals in the area, the rumours were rife. Yeah. Yeah, so even like just regular folk on the street knew. But he was never collared for it. And then um, you start to look in the background. Um, First of all, in his own words, he was invited into the inner core of the British royal family in the 1960s by a man called Lord Mountbatten. Lord Mountbatten was a known paedophile. He was infamous for it. Has that been proven officially? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, people have come out and they've, they've, they've talked about being abused by him. Oh. But, you know, I, I, I've I seen loads about this. I, so, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't cross the line and say this is how it is unless, unless I've reached a point where I've got so much information from no different people. Mm-hmm. And so a known paedophile brings Savile into the inner core of the British royal family, where he becomes a close friend of Prince Philip, till they had a big falling out, apparently, and a close friend to his death of Prince Charles, now King Charles. Um, And he was in with a politician such as uh, Thatcher? Well, well, yeah, again, Mm -hmm. um, he was a a friend of Margaret Thatcher, Mm -hmm. and it was Margaret Thatcher's cabinet that all the stories came out about how many paedophiles there were in in, in Thatcher's cabinet. Mm -hmm. Her father... Um, who ran a, a grocery store in Grantham, it was a known bloody uh, uh, paedophile. Uh, I mean, the, the girls were warned not to take a job at his shop, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. bloody everywhere. Um, and so anyway, um, what um, Savile was doing was like people knew, but he was never collared because what he was doing, and this has not come out, he was um, a procurer of children for the rich and famous. He was supplying children. This has come out through at least one member of his family, but but and it has come out through other sources. Through the, uh, it's not been broadcast in the way everything else it's was. It's not. It's not coming out through the mainstream. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, Ted Heath, right? Ted Heath, um, the Prime Minister of Britain, who took us into the European, uh, what became the European Union, the EEC. Um, he was a paedophile and a Satanist. And I said so in The Biggest Secret. And that book was read to him uh, in the week of publication when he was still a member of parliament. How long ago was this? This was 1998. Mm. And um, it was 17 years before the, um, the Wiltshire police did an investigation into Heath paedophilia and said if he was alive today we would open uh, an investigation we 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 would we would be questioning him on on this because what was his response when they read it to him he said he just said david i must be mad and that was it that was there was no other response and um i wasn't uh it, that's what he did um and and savile was supplying children for him. This, this has come come out through various different sources, not least in the uh, the so called care home in Jersey, which uh, came to prominence at one point involving Ted Heath. And I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick. Was that story. the one that Savile was the? Yeah, that he used to visit. Because I've seen a clip of him, just for reference, yeah, just so people know that there's, you know, from what I've seen even, there was a clip of him talking to a little girl, I think, on the in the bed, and, and she was really scared of him. And he said, what have I done to make you so scared of me? And she said, everything. Yeah. And it was chilling. It was Pe- horrific. People were scared of him. Yeah. Not, not least because, and not least media people were scared of mm. him, because of his connections. Mm. When you're supplying children for paedophilia and sacrifice, by the way, um, to to the rich and famous networks of the cult. Because there were lots that went missing, right? Yeah, exactly. On oh, the number of ch- kids go missing. I mean, pe- people relate the number of kids go missing to the number of missing children's stories on the news. Forget that. Mm. Vastly greater than that. You never hear most of them. Um, and and so um, they were. Um, w- when you're supplying them with 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 children, you you don't get collared. First of all. Uh, for what you're doing, anyone that threatens to expose you, well, they better watch their back as well, because the same people are watching his back. And I tell a, you, a, a bit story. like what happened in America to um, 
Epstein, you know, he was, he was in jail, he was ready to testify, boom. Yeah, gone. well, well, it, you know, they tried to protect him. They protected him once, mm. first round, and then where the, the, the women wouldn't give up, she, um, uh, or they um, uh, had to uh, stop him coming into court and it all coming out. Whether they killed him or whether they didn't, uh, that's that's an open question that people have. But certainly he was he was disappeared. And and by the way, on on our um, our media platform, Iconic, we have a um, a program um, called Classified, which which is really you know t- looking at the far out stuff. And uh, uh, recently. Um, we interviewed a lady called um, Bryant, Juliet Bryant, who is an, a known um, girl that was abused in the Epstein network. Mm-hmm. And she describes on that show how she sh- saw him shift from a what she, she described as from a human form to a dragon-type form. Mm. And why they're doing the same sacrificial rituals now with these rich and famous billionaires as they were doing back then in Babylon and so on. It's because um, when you um, you are going through the ritual, you've got your sacrificial victim, often a child, by the way, and there's there's a, a reason for that. You know, when they talk about uh, the ancients um, sacrificing young virgins to the gods, that was children, basically. That's what we're talking about. What they're doing is systematically um, triggering terror in the in the sacrificial victim. The greater the terror they can elicit, the greater the uh, offering to the gods. So it's all about terrorizing the victim. When people are, are, are exhibiting um, emotion uh, uh, or thought energy, um, uh, like terror, for instance, you can see the body language of how they're feeling because they're screaming or they're terrified or whatever. And if you're sensitive, you can pick up these vibrations uh, and you can feel what they're feeling. When you, when, when, you know, people saying, oh, I'm fine, mate. Oh, honestly, I'm fine. But you can feel it. You're not fine, are you? You know what? It's, it's just because you're mentioning this, uh, because of all the, the issues we've been seeing on social media from uh, Gaza, seeing all these children all over my uh, Twitter timeline crying and upset, it hits you immediately. Yeah. Like you feel it. Yeah, it's a it's it's a vibrational connection. Yeah. You're picking up what they're giving off, mm. um, and so um, you can feel that, and you can see the body language. What you can't do is see the frequencies. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they're being given off outside of our visible light. human system, and they're going into this astral dimension. That's why we can't see them. It's why we can't see the astral unless we have psychic abilities. And these gods on this peripheral lower frequency band of this astral dimension are absorbing these frequencies which the sacrifice is giving off. That's the sacrifice to the gods. And what happens in this world uh, of the the Satanists who are are doing this in our reality, in the human reality, um, they then drink the blood of the sacrifice because the chemical expression of that terror releases an adrenaline into the blood, which to them is like a drug, it's like a high, and they drink the blood. And people have, have seen this happen, have described how they, when they drink the blood, they go bloody wild often because of the effect it has upon them. And this is where adrenochrome comes from. And then... I'm investigating these rich and famous billionaires of today who are players in this cult. And again and again and again, I'm led into Satanism and pedophilia. Those two are absolutely connected um, for reasons I explain in the books. And what are these bloody billionaires doing satanic ritual sacrifices to to their version of the gods, right? Right. It's just like you, the old god where we've seen the footage that Alex Jones took. Yeah, in uh, Bohemian Grove. Yeah, all we, that stuff. George yeah. Bush and all of them were there. Al Gore was there. They're, they're doing it to the same gods, right? They're same freaking entities that the ancients were doing the sacrifices to and were terrified of. 
these people today are doing the sacrifices to in the coal. Um, and I've talked to people all over the world um, over the decades. I've been doing this a long time, um, 34 years I'm, I've been doing it now, you know, coming up 34 years. And I've met Satanists and people that took part in rituals against their will who have, have told me of their experiences. And they, they, these are major, major players like the royal family, British royal family, Dutch royal family, all that stuff, all major players in this. Um, in this uh, satanic uh, ritual um, culture. Um, and so then I asked that question I, I mentioned a few minutes ago. Oh, so what do the gods get out of it? I take you back to the first Matrix movie and the Morpheus character holds up a battery and he says, the Matrix is a computer generated dream world designed to turn humans into one of these, a battery. And that's when... Uh, a massive understanding started to uh, started to come to me from many different sources, which I talk about in the books. These quote gods, these entities, are feeding off human energy, but it's a particular type of human energy. Um, this is mainstream science again. Every time we feel emotion. Every time we think, we're generating frequencies. And those frequencies, in terms of what the frequencies are, relate to the nature of the emotion and the nature of the thought. And scientists have worked out what these frequencies are for different emotions, right? And uh, Is that like when you go into a room and you kind of feel like, oh, there's a... A bad energy in here. Yeah. You know that, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if, if you go into a like an, an old house where there's been a lot of um, really bad things gone on. Mm. See, w when the bad things are going on, the people involved in the bad things are giving off that vibe. And unless someone goes into that house and changes the frequency, they sit there vibrating. So you go into it and you think, oh, this is horrible. God, because you're picking the vibe up, mm -hmm. right? So this is, these are the energies I'm talking about. So these entities, by their very nature, um, are very low vibrational in nature because anyone that wants to impose their will and manipulate and cause suffering and war and death and destruction is in a very low vibrational state. And if they're going to feed off human energy, they can only feed off it if we are delivering it within the band of frequency they can absorb. Because um, otherwise, if we were uh, in a world of love and joy and happiness and peace, then we'd be giving off frequencies, yes, but much higher, more expanded frequencies, and they can't, wouldn't be able to absorb them, like radio stations in the old analog system sharing the same space but not interfering with each other because they're on different wavelengths to give off the frequencies that they can absorb, we have to be in fear, anxiety, depression, resentment, regret. They must have had a hate. field day over COVID. Well, yeah. Uh. I mean, Brian, look at what's happening as we speak in uh, uh, Israel, Gaza. Mm -hmm. Look what's happening in Ukraine. Look what happened in the First World War, Second World War. Look what they planned for the Third World War. And it's just an absolute explosion of low vibrational, emotional, particularly emotional, but mental too, energy, which they're feeding off. Now, we can start to understand 